Hello, this is H.C. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy III! Since last time, Ghost Coast stole the Ice Horns from the Dwarves to gain the power of fire, and apparently ran away to the Cave of the North, so we have to chase after him. So, let's head there. Yeah, all these Dwarves say relatively the same thing. Yeah, he stole the Horns, I know, I heard about it. Oh, come on, get out of my way. Fast forward! Get out of my way! Ah, uh, there. Man, even with fast forward, that took ten seconds. There's a chocobo forest right there, but I'm not gonna go there quite yet. Now, if you tried coming to the flame cave earlier, there would have been a, a wall of flame blocking your way inside. Uh, apparently, the ice horns that Ghost Guts Coast stole uh, destroy the seal. So. Now, anyway, this is what I would call the first critical point in the game. If you just blast your way through the game, the boss at the end here can be one of the hardest in the game, and you can really die there easily. Uh, now, fortunately, I'm not very far from breaking through to a couple more attack multipliers, and I definitely want to take advantage of that. Uh, this time, I would strongly recommend grinding up to level 17. This will net you an extra physical attack multiplier per hand for your melee warriors, because every 16 levels you get another attack multiplier. So, Also, this will net you an extra magic attack multiplier for your wizards, which would also be very handy. And uh, Plus, by the time you finish that level grinding, your wizards should either have or be very close to attaining a skill level of 33. This will also net you another attack multiplier. So, for an investment of half an hour of level grinding without using the fast forward feature, if your emulator doesn't have that, you, you effectively double the strength of your magic. And I think that is time well invested so you don't have to use save states to get through the boss. So, in any case, that's what I'm going to do. I'm also going to drop off the uh, shuriken and medusa arrows at the fat chocobo in the forest there, since I won't be needing them for quite some time. So, yeah. Oh, also, I'm going to equip the freezing staff on my white wizard there, because uh, no enemies are weak to bolt here, so I'm just going to remove the shining staff for now. So, I'm going to take care of the level grinding, and be right back then. Okay, I've completed all the level grinding here. I'm at level 17, and take a look at these numbers. Six hits per attack there. Oh, baby. Compared to four, that's amazing. And I almost got my skill up to 33. It's 32. By the time I get through this cave, I'll be uh, ready to go with that. So, we're, we're good to go. Uh, now, make sure with the White Wizard to save your mute spell charges. Uh, not for the boss, but for a particular enemy that can turn you to stone. Um, I just realized it also pre prevents your mo your enemies from casting certain attacks, or special attacks on you, not just their spells. You could have used that on the boulders in the previous area from turning you to stone. And there's another enemy around here that can also turn you to stone, so you want to save it for them. Uh, and if I meet up with them, I will demonstrate it for you. So, with that, let's get moving along here. Now, there's a chest to the left that I got already while I was level grinding here. I'm sorry, but uh, it contains a south wind, so nothing to worry about. And this lava would hurt you, except my lead character has um, ice equipment. Let me see what happens when I switch. Okay, well, I guess it doesn't have to be your lead character. Any character has protection from fire, so you won't take damage here. Um, at least that's what I was told. If you don't have ice equipment, you won't take damage. You will take damage if you don't have ice equipment. So, let's get this chest over here. Well, another south wind. That'll be useful later on. Not here, but another area. Yeah, it was just a battle with a new enemy, Krakata. Looks kind of like a lizard, weak to ice. Pretty obvious there. So, nothing special about them, really. Just a little tough, that's all. And here's a couple new enemies, Balloon and Red Mallow. Now, Balloons w will explode on you if you don't kill them in one hit. And they will hurt you. They can kill you. They can deal like four or five hundred damage sometimes. So, 
Got to be real careful against them. Uh, I would make sure Lunith has both of his Salaman swords so he can kill them, or um, have Ingus cast fire on them to one-shot them. I wouldn't trust Ark to be able to kill them in one hit. I mean, he can, but I wouldn't trust him. Let's put it that way. So, And also, unlike previous Final Fantasy games, the Mallows or Slimes or whatever you want to call those types of enemies, they do not have perfect physical defense, so you can actually kill them with your melee warriors. So that's awfully nice of the programmer. Ooh, a lava waterfall. That's always cool. <laughs> Ah, uh, I was holding my breath on that one. The Ice Blade. It's going to be one of your most powerful weapons for quite a while there. And, well, obviously it's Ice Elemental. Uh, switch in the Salaman Sword when you need to, although he should be able to still kill a bomb, even with the one Salaman Sword, if you don't like switching weapons like I do. So, takes too long. Let's go through this waterfall. Ow! No, I want to go down first. Yeah, that's right. Come on, I want my Black Wizard to gain another skill level. It's very important that I gain that skill level. It'll make the next boss a lot easier. And we get a high potion. Yay! They restore about 500 HP or so. Maybe less. Maybe more. I forget. We want to go to the left first here. And get a potion. Yay! Let's head up now. Ooh, there's a mysterious looking rock. I wonder. Yep, it opens a secret passage! Get a high potion. Ah, there's the enemy I was worried about. Milmicoreo. I, I guess that's how you pronounce it. Sorry if I mispronounced someone's last name who is Milma Correo. But anyway, um, are they weak to anything? Uh, yeah, they are weak to ice. But they can stone you with their um, glare attack, or yeah, I think that's it, or whatever. But it can be countered with uh, a mute spell. So, so there. Yay! I gained the skill level I needed. Oh, that's so good. Okay, we made it. With one battle to spare, I got up to skill level 33. This is why you don't use the Red Mage at the beginning of the game, because you will not get up to skill level 33 by the time you get to this boss fight if you used the Red Mage for that part. So, anyway, I've got some healing to do, so I'm going to take care of that before I enter the Crystal Room and be right back. Okay, we're all healed up, ready to go, so let's get this guy. Let's get Guzco. He's taking the power of the crystal. Oh no! But he can't get its full power without destroying us first. Die! Now this guy would normally be very hard if I didn't do all the level grinding that I did before. I'm even going to cast Arrow. It's pretty useful. But yeah, the thing is, is that he has a flame attack, which you'll probably see. And it deals a lot of damage, which normally would be a problem. Except now, yeah, that's almost 200 damage, or over 200 damage to the monk there. But yeah, I mean, my Cure 2 spell would not be able to keep up with that kind of damage for very long. I mean, he would eventually wipe out my entire party, but fortunately, with those extra attack multipliers, or magic attack multipliers, my Cure 2 spell can keep up with it. And also, Ice 3... Without those extra multipliers, it can miss sometimes. I mean, it would not do nearly that much damage. But apparently he was a lot easier than I thought he was. So, Screw you, that's a junk call. Don't worry about it. Anyway. Okay, and we get the blessings of the Crystal of Fire. Yay! And some new job classes. But I'm out of time now, so I will talk about the new job classes next time on Let's Play Final Fantasy III. This is H.C. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day.